feel it. Whatever it is, it is done. Today, June 9, 2024, it is the second Sunday <laughs> of the sixth month. And this second Sunday, I have a great thing to celebrate. Sandra, Sandra just got up this morning. She was full of energy. Her brother just got her pumped up for the last three weeks. They've been working in the yard. And they've been telling them, talking about old times and growing up. So thank you so much. Let's give Sandra a big hand. Thank you. I can tell when she feels better, she goes for her pearls. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, this uh, second Sunday of the sixth month is so critical. I like, and you know, I'm learning this calendar, this calendar idea to always know where you are. The second Sunday of the sixth month means that you have, what, about um, six months and three weeks left. And that really gives us a framework now. You know, it's easy to forget where you are when you don't know where you are. And you just say, ah, it's June 9th. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. But when we say it's the second Sunday of the sixth month, mm -hmm. meaning that there are, what, six months and a few weeks left, that has very powerful meaning. So welcome, Unity of Wilmington. Welcome online. You know, our online presence has been growing. I think people are watching online to connect in with the vibration and with the music that happens here. So thank you so much for your presence. I'd like to acknowledge our visitors again. Thank you for being here. Let us give you all another big hand. You. you always have a home at Unity of Wilmington. When you come in, there's always something going on here that's exciting, that's full of fun, that's uplifting, and that will make you feel a lot better. When you leave here, you're going to be healed. <laughs> I mean, you hang around these positive people. Everybody comes in and then, you know, you hear the, the celebration singers. I like that y'all did a good job. I tell you, give the, give the singers a cheer. So, what y'all have done is set the stage for our message today. And our message today is really one that I'm profoundly, I guess it's very personal. And the reason is that persistence has been one of the things that I've struggled with. Sam reminds me all the time. <laughs> she says, stick with one thing until you finish it. Get it done. And you know what? That's good advice. And so this month, when we think about so many times that we had a chance to do something great and complete a job when we've stopped. Ross Perot had a, a great quote. He said, most people give up just when they're about to achieve success. They quit at the one yard line. They give up at the last minute of the game, one foot from a winning touchdown. How many of you watch the basketball games, these, this, the last championships? Mm -hmm. Most of those games, one whole series, I think out of four games, there was only about five or six points made the difference. Out of, like one by one point, two points. And what you saw is at the end of the game, really and truly, as a sports person, I'm content to watch the last five minutes of the game. <laughs> because it is there you see that special thing happen in people that makes them rise to the next level. You know, you see some people, I was watching basketball when that last, nobody wants to take that winning shot. Because the winning shot, if you miss, is what? The losing shot. <laughs> and I watched them on basketball. You ever, you ever see Meyer, they're about to pass the ball, like, I don't want that thing passing. You want to take it? Nobody wants to put themselves out and take that winning shot. And so, Persistence, though, is like, hey, step up and do it, no matter what it is. So when we think about this persistence, our topic, persistence is the bridge to accomplishment. Think of the things that we could have done if we just finished. 
There's a book in every one of us. How many people are trying to want to write a book? Yeah. And all you gotta do is do it. You know, we get, and you might say, paralyzed by the pursuit of excellence and perfection. Nobody ever writes a perfect book the first time. They write it and then they correct it. I often tell people, if you're going to write a book, sit down and do it. Don't worry about whether it's going to be a good book. Don't worry about whether it's going to sell. Just do it. So this day, when you leave, those of you who want to write a book, I'll give a piece of advice. You know, one thing you have control over, time. And so if you want to write a book, I recommend this. Every day, set aside an hour or two hours that you commit to sit there at your desk and write. The first few days is going to be a challenge because you start scratching. <laughs> you want water. <laughs> you want to go and look out the window. <laughs> Everything but sit there. But that's the secret to writing because it's like when you sit and commit to the end result, it's like priming the universal pump. As a writer, many times I'll read stuff that I've written and I'm like, I don't remember writing that. Sandra and I were at a breakfast one time and the lady quoted something and I was saying, that sounds, that's some good stuff. <laughs> and then when I went up to meet her, she had my book and she goes, yeah, man, I can. I'm like, I don't remember writing that. Because when you commit to an outcome, the energy flows into you to get it done. We get confused by the how. Young man, Herman Taylor, in New York, Herman Taylor was at a book signing and we talked. And he said, I want to write a book. And I want to be a motivational speaker. It was March 18th of last year. And I said, great, so be it. You get it done. And I gave him that piece of advice. He sat in his room. He'd get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and get two hours. And he said the first week he sat there and absolutely nothing came. <laughs> Nada. And at that point, he was about ready to say, well, you know, who am I to write a book? You know, he, he was telling in a testimony, he said, it took me 16 years to get out of college. <laughs> 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 he said, I went to four colleges before I finally got a degree. I ain't qualified to write nothing. But he kept sitting. And see, that's where that persistence comes in. You sit there and you, you vision, you focus on that vision, and it will happen. So what is persistence? Persistence is the sustained effort you must acquire. Let's put it in the sustained effort I must acquire to induce faith in my own ability and to get desired results in my life. You always have to have an objective when we talk about persistence. You can't be just generally persistent. I'm persistent about everything. You have to be persistent about a particular thing. It requires an outcome. And see, that creates an automatic alignment. When we really get into, we might talk in metaphysics and spiritual principles, it's all about alignment. And it is through, it is through persistence that you can focus on one thing long enough to create the alignment to attract the results into your life. Persistence is a measure of your faith in yourself and in your ability. You know, when they don't want to take that last shot, it's because they don't think they're going to make it. And if you shoot with doubt on your mind, what happens? You don't make it. Michael Jordan had a quote, and he said, 29 times he had been entrusted with the last shot and missed. He said, but I keep shooting, and that's why I win. We can look very often at instances of persistence. One of the great writers talk about persistence. Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen, and they came out the concept of the chicken soup for the soul. They'd actually written a book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, that had a hundred stories of inspiration of how you know, people had been able to do great things. And you know, when they went to the publishers, you know what the publishers said? Who wants to read about other people's victories? 
He went to 130 different publishers and got no's. I mean, really, read about it. It's amazing, 100. You know, as a writer, I, did, I didn't have that in me. My, what I did, I said, I'll just publish it myself. <laughs> you know, which was, was not a bad idea. You know, because once I published it myself, then other people saw it, and then I sold the rights again. That way, so it, it did work. But man, there's something about hanging in there on the original vibration that makes it explode. When they hung in there for 131, okay, they didn't quit on the 129th. They didn't even quit on the 130th. On the 131st publisher, a small publishing company down in Florida, they weren't in the big lane, they weren't on Wall Street, or they weren't, you know, a New York publisher. Small company nobody ever heard of. But look what happened. Over 250 books, over 500 million so. Persistence. Give me another example. Howard Schultz, Starbucks. You ever wonder where that came from? Man, he must have had tons of money. He had a great idea for, for a coffee place where, where it wasn't about just the coffee, it was about community. He recognized that people like to get together. Sandra, they used to get together at, uh, what was it? Uh, Krispy Kreme. Okay? Remember when Krispy Kreme was on Market Street? Some of the old timers, yeah. And there would always be a group of people sitting around in there chatting. Yeah, that was their place. Well, Howard Schultz said, why don't we take that to another level and make people feel a certain kind of way when they come in a coffee house? Well, he went to two hundred banks and got no's. Matter of fact, he said someone said he went to 242 banks and got no's. And at the very moment when he was ready to throw in the towel, his wife was about to have a baby. They were broke. A doctor and two friends loaned him $400,000 and the rest is history. You know what, it seems that when you persist again on something that's really challenging, the level of results is very commensurate with the amount of persistence that you have to have. I was not very persistent in pursuing a publisher and I have not sold 500 million books. <laughs> okay, so if you have a good idea, something you want to be doing, have, and if, if, if a hundred people tell you it's crazy, keep pushing. The Bible makes it very clear about persistence. And, you know, I like to use the Bible as a spiritual reference book. And in the Bible, and really truly though, in all of the spiritual texts, you find the same principles. In Luke chapters 9 and 10, it says it so clear. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened. And it goes on to confirm it, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone that seeketh, findeth. And everyone that knocks, the door will be opened. So that spiritually, the Bible is saying, all you gotta do is keep doing it, it just doesn't tell you how long. <laughs> There's no scripture that says you gotta knock 17 times. <laughs> and the door will open. And that's the essence of faith. The idea of the Bible of, of persistence is that if you have anything that you desire deeply, and if you keep working at it and keep pushing towards it, it's going to happen. Persistence is the one trait that virtually every successful person has. When you meet successful people, they'll tell you how, man, I was ready to give up. I was ready to throw the towel in. And just before I threw down and quit, it happened. So what does it take to be persistent? Well, number one, you gotta have a vision, <laughs> okay? You have to have something that you wanna be doing have. When I, when I talk to young people now, I'm always afraid because when I say, what do you wanna be? So many don't have a clue. At least when I was a kid, you wanted to be a cowboy. 
uh, 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 so you know, want to be something. But so many young people say, well, where do you want to be? I don't know. And so if you have no objective to what you want to be, do, or have, you can't be in alignment with the universal powers that will make it happen. So what does it take to be more persistent? Number one, to realize persistence is a choice. You choose to get up at four o'clock in the morning to get that extra hour. You choose to, you know, you get knocked down seven times. You choose to get up that eighth time. You know, the rumble in the jungle with Muhammad Ali. I loved to watch that fight. I was reading with George Foreman was talking, was saying that his thought was to take him out quick. He, he thought he was going to do Ali a favor by knocking him out quickly. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, it was, it was, it was, it was, he was an older guy, now he's out of shape. I don't want to brutalize him, let me knock him out quick. Well, that went on for seven rounds. Ali had a strategy. All Ali had to do, his, his idea of persistence was, don't get knocked out. <laughs> that, that was his whole plan, don't get knocked out. <laughs> and so, in that seventh round, by the time George had fought him, said there was nothing left. And Ali knocked him out, won the fight. So persistence is a choice. Choose the thing that you know will get you where you want to go. Persistence is a learned behavior. And that's the good part. That's the good news. You can learn to be persistent. And that's why when you read about other people and the great things they've done, the Howard Schultz and, and the uh, Mark Victor Hansen, even the uh, J.K. Rowling, if you read her story with that whole um, Harry Potter, that whole series, nobody wanted it. She went through a ton of publishers. So it's a learned behavior. When you see what others have done, you can do it. The third thing required for faith, for persistence is faith. Without faith, you cannot be persistent. Look at the definition of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That means you gotta have something you wanna be, something you wanna do, something you wanna have. And it's the evidence of things not seen. You don't see any evidence of your success. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Let's say that together. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So what are the four keys to developing the skill of persistence? Key number one, vision. I like to say I see. Vision is that that you want to be, do, and have Whatever the goal is you have in life, whatever the goal you have for this year, you have to see it. You must have a clear vision of your objective. Many people can't be consistent because they're not clear about what they have to do. They're not clear whether they want to tap dance or sing or be a doctor. You gotta make a choice. Proverbs 29 chapter 18 verse says it very profoundly. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And so if you don't have a vision of something you want to be, do, and have, if it's good health. When, when your health is challenged, if you can keep seeing yourself healed and whole and persistently do the things that will bring that about, then it will happen. Sometimes your vision has to be bigger than your consciousness. What do you mean, Doc? You know, many times our vision is so attached to our condition. You know, when you go to somebody and say, like this money, I want to make a million dollars this year. Well, how much did you make last year? 22,000. <laughs> okay, well, what, what, what's going on right now to make you think you got a million? Well, I'm getting rich. <laughs> okay? So, Sometimes you have to have a dream big enough to pull you into it. So your dream can pull your consciousness into it. That's why it's so important to hang out with people smarter than you. If you're, if you're the smartest person in the group, then you're in the wrong group. <laughs> you want to hang out with people who've been places that you haven't been. Because now when they share that with you, it helps you build your consciousness so you can dream bigger. 
I dream big dreams. Let's say that together. I dream big dreams. The second key to persistence is we call it I am, the I am principle. In other words, it's a statement of being. Whoever that is is persistent, you gotta know who you are and whose you are. In Genesis, when God tells Moses to go tell Pharaoh to let his people go, Moses was alive. If you ever really read Moses, read that Genesis closely, you'll find that Moses was just like us. Each of us actually is a person in the Bible. When we look at the people in the Bible, those aspects are in us. Moses was just like us. When God told him to do it, Moses said, well, I he started making excuses. <laughs> he said, I stuttered. <laughs> God said, don't worry, just open your mouth. <laughs> Can you open your mouth? Yeah, but I'll put the words there. And then after all else was failed, Moses said, well, well uh, God, uh, who shall I say sent me? And God said, say, I am sent you. I am is the making power. I am is your declaration of who you are. And so when we say that I want to be persistent, you have to be clear about who you are because it requires faith. And you got to have an understanding of who you are to have faith and whose you are. Because your ability to manifest depends on your alignment with the source. When you and God are on the same page, nothing is impossible. When you believe that strongly, nothing is impossible. So I am. As God told Moses, I am that I am. Let's say that together. I am that I am. The third key is willpower. When you sit down and write that book that you're going to write, and I'm telling you, somebody's going to leave here, I guarantee you, next year this time, somebody who's in this room right now is going to come back and say, Doc, my book is out. <laughs> Here's a copy for you. <laughs> okay? And uh, I'd like to speak about my book, talk about my experiences. And we're going to set it up, kid. We're going to give you music. <laughs> <laughs> Willpower is a statement of your desire and your determination. So whenever you have something you want to be, do, and have, you got to want it badly. The level of your desire is the vibration that you create. And the law of vibration says, whatever your level of vibration, your manifestation, the results you get are commensurate with your level of vibration. So when you want it badly enough, I guarantee you that every one of you, if you think back, anything that you want is really, I mean, badly, you know, got to have it, no way I can live without it, you got it. Someone once said, well, everybody's a salesman, said, well, I don't have any talent selling. You got a wife? <laughs> Must sell <sew> something. <laughs> <laughs> See, when we desire something, we have the ability to get above whatever the things, our doubts and our, our insecurities, desire can neutralize all that. <laughs> I have the power. I have the desire. My desire is deep. Let's say that together. My desire is deep. And then fourth, I do. Everything we talk about is just fluff if you don't do something. Execution requires choice and action. We all have to have a daily method of operation. It's weird, you know, but the reason businesses are successful is because they have a daily method of operation. Think about it. The universe gives us models. What does the sun do? It comes up every day. So that's a symbol to us that we must live our lives in a daily way. Just as the sun comes up every day and the moon comes up at night, we have to live in a daily pattern. And it's so to be persistent, you have to develop a daily method of operation so that you can see what you must do each day, so that you can dream the dream, so that you can see your vision, so that you can write it down. If you don't write down the thing that you want to be persistent about, it won't happen. The scripture in the Habakkuk says, write the vision, make it plain. 
It goes on to say that he may run that reading list. So not only must you write it down, you must write down a plan to get it done. Feel the vision. Anything you want to be doing, have, and you feel as though it's already done, it's already done. So, if this is the case, if you see it, if you affirm that you are, I am it, if you have the desired determination, and if you take action, why is it that people don't complete what they start? Fear of failure. You start out on the path, if you fear failure, you have to recast that failure as a dress rehearsal for success. Period. I'll say it repeat after me. Failure is a dress rehearsal for success. Failure is a dress rehearsal for success. Fear of criticism. If nobody's criticizing you, you probably aren't doing anything worthwhile. <laughs> criticism is the deal. The more people criticize you, that should give you power. Man, if they're criticizing, I must be on the right track. You know, someone once said, God doesn't move park cars. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do something. And so, let criticism, let it roll off your back. But the worst one that keeps you from doing what must be done is procrastination. When you put off today what should have been done yesterday, it will not happen. So let's summarize and complete this this message today, because I know everybody's anxious to run out and get busy. <laughs> <laughs> Grab a little ice cream on the way and like, I gotta go do my thing. I gotta go accomplish my goal. <laughs> so number one, persistence is the bridge between thought and accomplishment. That any thought that you have, the Bible says, a man, a man shall have, a mind shall have whatsoever it thinks in its heart. <clears throat> persistence is what brings it to balance. Study the lives of successful people so you can see that they too had problems. Many times if you can just know that somebody else did it. I mean, when I read, I didn't know that 130 rejections. If I had read that before, I'd have probably gone on and pushed a little harder rather than go print the thing myself. The persistence is a choice and a learned behavior. And the persistence is based on faith. Faith and clarity. You have to be clear about what you want. And you have to have faith that you can do it. And those four keys are, I see the vision. I am the person to do it. I will not stop. And I do it until it is done. So let us stand and close out together. Was this helpful today? Yes. Someone once said, Doc, people should be shouting. I'm like, people should be acting. <laughs> Shouts are like, uh -uh, you know, like a shout. That's right. I don't, I don't like to think of myself as a motivational speaker. Because, you know, with motivation, you get all excited, but it's like a shower. Two days later, you're going to need another one. <laughs> so we like transformation. So you get changed when you come in here. So I'll say it, you repeat after me. I see my vision. I see my vision. I am capable of achieving it. I am capable of achieving it. I will and desire to achieve it. I will and desire to achieve it. I do what must be done. 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 One more time. I, I do what must be done. Knowing that the best is yet to come. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you so much. You may be seated.